Welcome. My name is Brian Davis. I'm the technology coordinator here at Southern Columbia Race School District. And we're going to have a, I'm going to go over a, a brief presentation of the educational technology here at Southern Columbia from a parent's perspective. First, uh, let me introduce my office here at Southern Columbia Area School District. There are three of us in the technology office, myself, uh, Mr. Chris Medden, and Mr. Jason Hughes. You see our contact information listed there in the slide, and also uh, the our web page is listed there as well, where there's additional information that all parents can go to at any time regarding technology. So a little bit about the technology office. We're basically responsible for everything technology related in the school district. We have approximately over 1600 computers in the school district that we're responsible for. In addition to the printers, copiers, multimedia projectors, security cameras, basically anything related to technology, we're responsible for. And specifically, we're responsible for the educational technology uh, of your students, which we're going to discuss today. So let's talk about the Southern Columbia Area School District EdTech program. All students in kindergartens, kindergarten grades, or kinder, excuse me, all students kindergarten through 12th grade are issued an SCASD.US email account. If you're not sure of your child's account, please contact the tech office through the information that was in that previous slide and we'll get that information out to you. I realize sometimes we have younger students or newer students but again, all students kindergarten through 12th grade are issued an SCASD.US email account once they are enrolled at Southern Columbia Area School District. Also, all students have access to the Microsoft Office 365 platform, and that includes Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Teams, online storage with OneDrive. Those all come with that email account as well. And the important thing to remember, the Microsoft Office 365 platform can be accessed on any type of device with an internet connection. Let's talk about the expectations for technology regarding Southern Columbia Area School District students. All students are expected to use all SCASD technology resources for educational use only, and it needs to be related to their curriculum and their classes. And this is something I think it's important for parents to understand that the basis of what we're doing, educational technology, with the students needs to be related to their curriculums and their classes. Also, all students are expected to comply to what the school board has approved for acceptable use policy. And right there you can see there is a link to our school board acceptable use policy of our technology within the school district for students if you're interested in reviewing that. So an important thing to understand is that we have a responsibility as a tech office is we need to also protect your students technology wise. So to do that, there's a couple of things we have in place. We have a content filter in place, which is for all internet activity, and that is on all SCASD issued devices. And what schools need to do that to become SIPA compliant. And SIPA compliant is a federal rule, uh, the Child Inter Internet Protection Act which again, there's a little bit more information there in that link, which means we need to filter internet content. The internet filtering content tool we use is a product called Lightspeed. We've been using it for years. Students are flagged for terms related to profanity, self-harm. Uh, also, we, we can monitor any of the students for non-educational use. Sometimes have a, students have a to, tend to go searching for things that are not related to their curriculum or their classes, classes and that's where we need to protect these students with the content filtering device. Also, we monitor all student email, both sent and received messages. Again, we're monitoring for profanity, self-harm, educational value. So again, those tools are in place uh, to monitor all of the email through the student email accounts, then also monitor anything the students do with the internet in regards when they're with their, with their devices in school. Ways parents, guardians can help protecting their students. Uh, as a tech office, we encourage parents, students, or excuse me, we encourage parents and guardians to log on to their child's school issued emails to just check to make sure everything is, is school related. So we encourage that. Uh, again, those email accounts can be logged on, on to on any device. Uh, we also have a tool in place that parents can receive a weekly log of their child's internet activity. And if you send me an email, 
at the email address listed there and also at the beginning of this presentation. We can set that up for you where you will receive a weekly log to see what your child has done on their school issue device during school time, uh, what kind of searches they're doing, what they're looking up, are they doing their school related activities. So that's a tool through our, our content filtering device Lightspeed that we can offer you. Also talk to your child about being a good digital citizen. Uh, being a good digital citizen is just knowing what is right and wrong out on the internet. That's a large topic and we try to we try to do that a little bit in school, but if the parents and guardians chip in on that, that's just going to help the process be a lot better for making sure uh, our students are staying centered on what they need to do and, and stay out of uh, bad areas per se on the internet via email and, and searches. So sometimes we do have inappropriate technology behavior and I thought that was important that I, I go over that with students and guardians. Uh, if any self-harm content is flagged, uh, we immediately, and I want to stress the word immediately, contact uh, the principals and guidance department specifically, so we can uh, hopefully intervene and, and make sure that the, everything is okay with the student. Also, if uh, there are other inappropriate non-school related content going on with email or with the internet, Immediately, we uh, will contact the student via email or in person, and we'll also send an email to the appropriate principal and the student's teachers of what the inappropriate technology behavior was. So again, hopefully we don't have to do this, but there are steps in place that we do do if there is inappropriate technology behavior. So what can parents, guardians help with their child's technology? So we do have a YouTube video out there, and you see the, see the URL of how to access your child's e email account and also Microsoft Teams, which we'll talk about in a little bit. If you click on that YouTube video link, it's a, I believe about an eight to nine minute tutorial that I go over on the steps of process of a, a parent getting into their child's email and then also Microsoft Teams. This is especially helpful if you're new to our school district. This can walk you through step by step. The important thing about that video is we did actually make it two years ago. So just remember you have your, to get your current child's email address and have their account information correct when you start going through that. Also, there's a link there. Uh, we are a Microsoft school. Microsoft puts out a lot of tips for families on remote learning. <clears throat> so there's another YouTube video link you can go to if you want to check out just some helpful tips since we're in our in this pandemic right now, how to go through remote learning. So what is kind of going into a remote learning. What is SCASD's platform remote learning? As I mentioned, uh, we do use Microsoft Teams. That is a product that we've gone with since the pandemic started. It can be accessed again on any device with an internet connection. There's a smartphone app for it as well. On the school issue devices, uh, the tech office recommends that you use the installed app or the web app. Uh, the, down, the download of the Teams app is free on personal devices, so if parents want to have it, I know we have some parents that have it on their phones to help with their children. If you have a personal device, again, it's a free download. can be accessed also, the app can be downloaded, but also there is a web-based product of Teams that works just as well. One thing we want to talk about is currently, as it, as it stands right now uh, in the school year 2021-22, some questions have come up with where the class video are, videos are in Teams. So currently, all teachers are recording their daily classes with Microsoft Teams. And I say currently, so we are in a pandemic, things change, but as of this recording this video in early October, currently all teachers are recording their daily classes. The recordings are saved for approximately a marking period of time. So if if you have a if you're in a second marking period and you're looking for a video from the first marking period, it may not be there. All students within a teacher's class have access to these class videos. So for example, if you are in an algebra one class and your teacher has a that class, you're going to be able to get into that video. And the videos are saved in the following area. And that's kind of the breadcrumb trail right there I have listed. So you need to be in the student's Microsoft Teams app, the specific class the student is looking for, the specific channel the recording took place in, the files tab, and then the recordings folder. All of the classroom videos are in that trail. 
So again, Teams app, specific class the student is looking for, the specific channel and the recording took place in, the Files tab, and Recordings folder. So let's talk about our one-to-one -one program that we have at Southern Columbia. Currently, all students in grades 3 through 12 are issued a school laptop. And that is either a Dell Latitude 3180 or a Dell Latitude 3190. They get issued one charger and also one case. Students are expected to care for this school issued laptop, uh, similar to what they're expected to with a school issued textbook. The students expect that they may have that laptop for three to four years. And unfortunately, sometimes we do have some damages. There is there are fees assessed if students have damages to their school issued laptop. Uh, that right there, there is a link to the one to one laptop guidelines that are listed out publicly on our web page that parents, guardians, students can look at. We do also offer a bring your own device program. And that information can also be found on our technology web page. If students are interested in that, they can bring in their own computer. They do have to meet our kind of requirements of going through our wireless. But again, we do offer that to the students. So let's talk a little bit about the one-to-one -one laptop repair fee. So the fee schedule is included in the beginning of the year on the Sapphire port parent portal of the sign-off. Uh, all the information that I'm going over was also listed in there. The repair fee is based off the current lunch status that we have of the student on record. So the, that could be a paid lunch status, a free or reduced lunch status for their for our repair fee. And again, that has to be the, the lunch status that we currently have on record. Charge repairs include, but are not limited to, screen compression cracks, missing keys, uh, broken computers, et cetera. And there is the fee schedule. Uh, if you're free and, re -lunch, free and reduced lunch status, first time is 15, second time 30. Regular lunch, first time 25, second time 50. If the computer's damaged re beyond repair, we do have $100 charge. And then if it's lost, it's 200. And again, just to be clear that that fee was included in the Sapphire Parent Portal sign off. And again, you can find that more specifics on that listed on the technology web page. So a little more one-to-one -one laptop program information continued. Uh, the laptop should be only for, the, lap, the student should only use the school assigned laptop they're assigned to. Uh, students should not allow family members to use the school lap, assigned laptop. Now this may be different a little bit in our younger grades. I understand that they may need a little help, but specifically in our middle school and high school grades, uh, there definitely should not be any other family members on that school assigned laptop, only the student. Students should not allow other students to use their laptop. Uh, the school assigned laptops cannot have personal software installed on them. You cannot have printers installed on them from the, your home. And unfortunately, it makes it very, very, very difficult. We cannot troubleshoot home wireless issues in my office. So a little bit of self-help for one-to-one. -one. one of the things that'll fix a lot of the problems, typically we say nine out of 10 problems is a full clean restart of a school assigned laptop by simply going down to the bottom left-hand corner, clicking on the Windows logo, clicking restart, that'll fix a lot of problems. We also let the students know that they should not have a large number of tabs open in their computers. The more tabs you have open, it's gonna slow the computer down. Also, we always tell the students if one web browser doesn't work, you can try another one. We typically have three web browser installed on the school issue, three web browser types installed on the school issue computers, Microsoft Edge, uh, Mozilla Firefox, and Google Chrome. Sometimes one browser will work and others won't. So try another browser. Also, it's a good practice for those students on the school issue devices to restart or shut down that computer at least once a day. And that's really important because we find like our, a lot of our students do not do that. So we try to stress to them it's good practice to shut down and restart that school issued laptop at least once a day. Kind of shifting gears, I want to talk a little bit about the Sapphire Community Portal. This is an excellent resource for parents and guardians to use to kind of follow what's going on with their students. The Sapphire Community Portal can be found by clicking 
to our webpage and going to the Sapphire link in the top right hand corner. If you do not have a user ID or password as a parent or guardian, contact your child's school's office. So if you're an elementary parent, contact the elementary office, middle school, same thing, high school, same. They will, the secretaries will get you hooked up with a user ID and password. Please do that. On that Sapphire parent community, community portal, there's important information you can see about your students. You can see their grades, you can see their assignments, you can see school forms, their schedule, other information. There's a wealth of information that you can do to follow along with what's going on with your child during the, during the school year. Please do that. A couple frequently asked questions we get in the tech department. Uh, I just talked about Sapphire. One of the things that I do not, or my office does not have access to, is we cannot reset Sapphire student or parent passwords. You must contact your child's school office. Because of the information involved with the parents, the technology office does not have rights to do that. So again, if you have problems with signing on to Sapphire, or you need a password reset in Sapphire Parent Portal, please contact the, your child's appropriate office. Another common question we get, students enrolled in a one-on-one -on -one program, can you get more than one charger? Uh, they may be in a case where they're at different households, one during a week, one on a weekend. Unfortunately, we do not have enough chargers to go around, so to do that, so we only are issuing one charger. The next question is a very, very important question. Again, as of early August, right now, we are getting uh, a lot of questions about hotspots for students. We are currently only handing out hotspots for students who must quarantine. It's very important to understand. Last year, I know we did issue a lot of hotspots out. Uh, that money uh, was kind of discontinued. So currently, we are only issuing hotspots out for students who must quarantine. One of the last things I want to talk about, and I have the URL listed there, and it can also be found on our technology web pages. We do, since we are a uh, Dell school and we buy Dell computers, there is a link out there that, that you could get some family discounts on if you're interested in purchasing your own personal computers. Uh, and sometimes they're very good, you know, 10%, 15%, 20% off, depending on what you're looking for. So I encourage you, if you're interested in that, there is a link right there you can go to. And again, this link can also be found on our web page. Well, that kind of concludes my little presentation I wanted to give to the parents and guardians out there revolving around educational technology and your students. Obviously, if you have any questions, please contact me. You can always contact me at the information that was provided there in the beginning. I want to thank you for your time. My, my information, again, is always out there that you can contact us. And again, we're trying to do our best with what we have to make sure the educational tech process is, is good for your students and it's benefits your students in regards to furthering their education here at Southern Columbia Area School District. Thank you very much and I hope everybody has a nice day.